Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with Dave and special guest Scott Garibay. Hey. So uh, today we're going to uh, revisit multi-classing, kind of compare it to single classing within Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons. Um, we did a, a video a while ago where each of us uh, in Nerdarchy created a multi-class character just to see what it's like. We've had the privilege of Scott running us a, a little kind of campaign with it. And then since then, we've kind of explored multi-classing in, in other ways by, you know, us getting involved in other games and whatever have you. So, what do you guys think? So, um, actually, this is a really uh, strange, but uh, I am definitely single class. And one of the strange reasons why is... I, you know, you guys know I love D and D. These these books are precious to me, um, and it's a it's a great game. But one of the things that's really strange is, um, and it, this hasn't been shown in your game much, but uh, actually I am a terrible player. <laughs> like I have a pretty good GM. I've grown up GMing, and I've GMed a lot more than I've played. But I am a terrible, terrible player. And so one of the things is um, I've met a lot of guys. I think you're definitely one of them. Um, and Ted, I, I props to you as well. But Dave, I, you know, and I know another player. His name is Curtis Lehman, one of the best I've ever seen at creating builds. And so, you know, there's this there's this path to this super effective character, and um, and I just don't know those paths. Like I, you know, it's hard for me to figure out. Do I trade this level here and this level there? Whereas, believe it or not, when I'm on a single character path, there's a lot of like branches, right? And it's hard for me to track the best path through a single character class, which I think is great. I think that, that means the, the game has enough complexity in it as it is. I'm glad that extra level is there for players who want to get even more crunchy and have even more weird path options, but I'm definitely a single class guy. Fifth edition, you have to think about multi-classing if you're going to do it far more than in previous editions. Like, in fourth edition, their multi-classing was super lame, did not much care for it. Um, in 3.5 is when multi-classing really came alive because in, in, in yeah. AD&D, again, you're better off just single-classing. In 5th edition, again, you are still better off single-classing, but you can have more interesting options and be more diverse with multi-classing. But almost like when you look at multi-classing, you have to figure out because of the abilities and, and the feats are tied to your, your class levels, uh, um, not your your character level, so you really have to think about that because you don't want to you don't really want to lose ability bumps because they're they're kind of rare and precious in this game, yeah. as well as the opportunity to take feats. You know, so like right now I'm playing Uthengar, who's a, who's a fighter wizard. He started off a wizard um, and went into into fighter, which is very unoptimized. <laughs> yeah. But but you know I, I saw him as a, I saw that character as a wizard, wizard first. Yeah. yeah and, a, and a fighter last, and he's going to take six levels of Eldritch Knight. Because, and then, and then yeah, f and then wizard for the rest of the way because, um, you know, the those six levels of Eldritch Knights will combine to give him two caster levels. We'll get a, a plethora of new spell casting options, uh, you know, in cantrips and spells known. He'll and then he'll get the f uh, fourth level and sixth level feats from being a fighter. Yeah, you know, plus the other cool things you get from being a fighter. But it's a fun character to play, like. Um, you know, when we encountered the bullet twice in that combat, I was able to misty step to its back, you know, and, and smack it on the back of the head. Like with your sword? With my axe, yeah. Yeah, okay. Got it, okay. Now if I you know, if I was just a uh, you know, a wizard or a fighter, you know, those options, you know, that wouldn't be something I could pro probably do. So I, I just love I love doing that kind of stuff. So here here's my take on it. Um, now we've we've done as Nerdarchy, you know, our games are low level. So we have, um, you know, your third level under, uh, you know, uh, underdark game. You know, your 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 Griffin Gaff game is, is currently level five, and then there's my game, which you guys are level six. Now, in both of your games, Dave, I have a single class character, um, and for the most part, I believe he's probably going to stay a single class character. Scott, you know, I've been in two of your games. Both of those characters were designed as a multi-class situation. Yep. Um, you know, I've got a fighter paladin and a warlock sorcerer, and the warlock sorcerer wound up taking all kinds of twists and turns with his levels. Um, so not even going to go there. Uh, but with that, with that character that you know, unfortunately we didn't get to share that game um, with you guys that are out there because we run it, in, uh, you, you ran it in a comic shop. But with that game, I saw 
there's a very big difference between the massive amount of low-level options that you guys have in, in your game, specifically, you know, Uthingar. He's got all these plethora of abilities that are jam-packed in the low levels. But then Kurt's spellcasting as, as a necromancer, he was pulling out yeah. so many more powerful effects when his second character came in that was so far above that it dwarfed anything that I got from all these different multi-class abilities yeah, because absolutely. he was getting that 7th, 8th level, ninth level spell slots that I just couldn't touch and was never going to. Now, I am a big proponent for single class and one of the things is I think it's realistic. I think uh, you know specializing is, is very hard to beat and actually I work in information technology and right now the guys who are super specialized in you know deep deep knowledge in a very narrow path are, are the highest paid dudes you know and so from the perspective of D&D &D saying hey single class you're going to get more out of it it absolutely is realistic in my in my opinion the other reason why I'm not super hot on um, on multi class is multi class has been used and uh, to tell the truth I don't understand it in some of the actually or maybe I just fundamentally disagree with it so one I hate the paladin warlock the palock <laughs> cannot stand it like the it's wrong in every way like to me a paladin is a holy warrior and you know fighting for his god and all and warlocks have are the exact opposite like they're you know they've sold their soul to Scott, some evil it's 2015 yeah. all yeah. these players now are goth boys and gals yeah and <laughs> exactly so so some of the combinations just don't make any sense at all the, even the other one like to me it's hard to understand the story aspect so um so one, I enjoyed your character, and one of the things that I would really encourage DMs to do out there is, he's like, I want to run a warlock paladin, or a warlock sorcerer, a warlock sorcerer. That made no sense to me as a DM. But to me, I never take shine off of what a player wants to do. If I, can, if there's any possible way I can make what a player is telling me wants to happen happen, I do it because the game is to make fun. You know, it's for them to have fun. Mm -hmm. And because um, the DM, generally DMs are, they're already sold. They're in. You know what I mean? So, um, so my issue is. Where what happened to this dude? Like, well, I sold my soul to this Fey God, or you know, the constellations, or whatever it is, and you know, I really want to dabble in that sorcery. Like, it's just hard for me to understand. Like, it would seem that one magical path is going to absorb you for your lifetime. It's under. It's hard for me to understand from a story perspective how these characters. No, are no, doing no. This. With the, there's two. You see, you're bringing up the two classes that that actually doesn't make sense for. Anyone become a, can become a warlock. All you have to do is be desperate one time in your life. Okay. And you can become a warlock. Interesting, yeah. Sorcerer, sorcerer is the magic awakening in your blood. Right. So, so exactly. So, yeah. like, you know, I think it makes perfect sense for the sorcerer and the warlock to multi-class, you know, into okay. you know into those classes or out of those classes, because they, story-wise, they're more like things that happen in your life, more like events where, you know, um, maybe cleric as well because you can be chosen by a god. But yeah, you like the warrior classes, like the fighter, like you devoted yourself to that. The the the, the rogue or the bard, you devoted yourself to those. The wizard, you devote yourself to those. Where where I feel like there's just certain classes, like you can be chosen as a paladin, like the god goes like you're it, you're the one. Same with the thing with the cleric. Even in the fifth edition player's handbook, I love this. It's like you can be a unwilling cleric, like like, like oh, Nate, yeah. Nate's character in, in, in my game, he is an unwilling cleric. Wow. Like he he wants to just be a, a tradesman. He wants to you know be a merchant. He right. wants to sell stuff, and it just so happens that his character story, you know, his deity said, "You're it." Yeah. Hello, yeah. Hello Joan Great of Arc. Yeah. Anybody heard of her? <laughs> yeah. You know, so like some some things, some classes it absolutely works for, in the sense that like, you know, you you have to separate the character and player goals. So, like, the player goal is, okay, creating this combination that the character may never have ever wanted or dreamed of. Like, in your campaign, I played a warlock fighter. And, you know, essentially, he was a fighter that, you know, got, um, you know, he, an accident happened and he was going to die. He didn't want to die. And, and then he came to regret his decision. So, like, as a player, do I want him to lose his warlock powers? Absolutely not. Yeah. But as the character, like, his quest, his goal was to retrieve his soul. Yeah, that he that he bargained away for his life. Yeah, that's valid. I, I hear you. And actually, I think one of the things that one of the reasons why, and I and I think it, it just 
the game is so precious like to me and one of the great things about it is it can be different things to different people to tell the truth especially talking to you guys it's clear that i've never really fully grasped the story aspects or the the player options to be good at multi multi-classing and so i'm limited in being able to make the best op i have i'm i struggle to take uh, a uh, a fighter from first to tenth and make sure that it's maxed and, and it has the well, right builds. Well, I'm constantly getting from players, why are your hit points too low, right? You well, know, and people are like, can I see your sheet? I'm like, shut up, this is right. my character. Well, you. with, with you know, when you go into character builds, I mean, you, you say you don't feel that you have this, the skill for it. And, you know, yes, there are definitely people who will say, well, all right, I'm going to make a super optimized character. Well, you know what, sometimes super optimized characters aren't all that fun. Right. You know, yeah. when you yeah. sit down and make Absolutely. a character, you got to make a choice of what you're looking for out of that character creation. To me, there are many times that I've sat down and said, yes, I want to make a character that's super optimized. I'm going to make this thing that's really good at this. There's other times I've sat down and I've made a character where I'm like, this is a really unique and interesting you know, character concept. I want to I want to play it. My Dragonborn Sorcerer Warlock that you didn't fully understand how how that character comes to be what he was. I felt I made a compelling and interesting backstory of why things happened with, with what they were. He didn't sell his soul. He didn't, you know, make some kind of compact. He read a book and somehow reading that book stole power from this ancient entity who's a lost god. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, he understands what happened and at any point in time in that character's story you could have said hey someone's coming to put the smack down on you because you're stealing you know power from from this entity now you chose to not incorporate that in your story and that's fine i was prepared for it to happen you know or not yeah but it was something that it's like you know what i like the concept of warlock i like the abilities that they get they're they're a very unique class from multiple angles, and you can prepare that that particular character from from any angle, and you can be a good character, and you can be a, a bad character, you know, alignment-wise, and play a warlock. It's what you want to do with it. It's what kind of story you and the DM want to work with together, and I, I find that that you know makes a makes it very a very compelling choice and that's why i think a lot of people are really turned on by the warlock um you know as far as you know a, a character option um but you know maybe it's too popular because it's too unique it's too interesting i i, I don't know um it's one of our most popular videos yeah you know, absolutely talking about yeah, the warlock. yeah um you know but as dave says there are many many other uh character class options that are very much Oh, you could pick up a level on this without needing to do any kind of training. You know, you have powers that can yeah. literally be just bestowed upon you, and you can move forward. So, I've I've talked about you know, low low level games. Multi classing gives you so much more. I think a lot of the uh, classes are front loaded with right, you so know for first through you, third yeah. level. So, if you're playing that under 10 10th level game, multi-classing is absolutely a very positive way to go. But if your campaign is going to stretch to the 15th plus, if if you're going multi-classing, you you, know, you built broad not deep. Yeah, you you, you have yeah. lots of options. You're you're going to you're going to lose that in the long run by not getting those 7th, 8th level, ninth level spells because they're just going to be lost to you. And you know, I just as a fire caster, I had so much options that I could do, but I just could not pull out the damage and and pull out the major things that Kurt was doing. Um, you know, in your game. Yeah, yeah. So you want to really look at, you know, talk to your DM, find out really where is this campaign going? How long is the story going to go? You know, should I do this? Should I do that? I don't care about any of that. I just play the character I want to play. So, well, I mean, there's there's that advantage as well. You know, and and I I do I kind of do the same thing, um, and and I try to have fun with whatever it is that I create. But it really, you know, it kind of opened my eyes to see that distinct difference between Kurt's character and mine. So I'm curious. So if you're going to go into these multi-classing uh, situations, or if you're staying with the single class, I'm curious. So I I get stuck on this behind behind this problem every now and then. I'm curious your guys' opinion on this. I frequently am sitting at a table. Everybody's having a good time, and one or two very talented build 
mm -hmm. um, build players who know how to do a solid build will say, let me see your sheet. Why on earth you're 20 points low on your HP or you are running a rogue with a plus four and you should have a plus eight dex. You know, um, so my question is, um, do, and so their, their perspective is, hey, we're a team and we're supposed to bring as much power to the to the board as possible to drop things and i'm like hey i got this weird little story aspect that cost me plus three here or plus two here <laughs> what is the what is the obligation of the players to be putting up a more powerful character or doesn't is matter. story story doesn't matter zero ever? it's your you know what okay. it's my it's your character play what you want to play I absolutely loathe, hate, want to punch people in the face when they start telling other people what to do with yeah, their character. Okay, I don't like that. It's, it's your character. It's your character. Yeah. It's your choice. Um, now, if a player sits back and says, hey, I don't know what I should do with my next level. Does anyone have any guidance? Well, you know, then feel free to step in and do do whatever. I typically know what I'm going to do. You know, if I, if I go multi-classing, I'll have to be like, well, you know, what, you know, here are my choices. What do I want to do? Do I want to advance this, advance that, take, take something else entirely? Um, you know, but, you know, you, you know, all right, well, these are your options. You know, there's only so many classes. You know, you're not choosing a new background. Um, you know, and there's only so many things that your character build is going to have as an option because, you know, if you're multi-classing, you need to make sure you have your stat prereqs. So you're not going to, unless you've got straight 13s, you know, you're not taking everything. And even the everything thing is... Here, here, here's one final argument before we, like, finish this video that I want to leave off with. For elf characters and dwarf characters and other races that are that are long lived like that, multiclassing actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. In the sense that you know, we you know it's beyond the scope that we as 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 humans and and relatively short lived uh, species can actually grasp and understand. But someone who lives hundreds of years, like. Is it really a, a big deal for them to devote themselves to more than one pro interesting. Pro uh, profession? Right. Yeah, yeah that, that's a great story aspect where you're thinking about, you're putting yourself into the mindset of what, is it, what does it mean to live two, three hundred years old? Yeah, you're right. Or an elf seven hundred yeah. years old. Yeah, you know, yeah maybe a thousand right. yeah. years. Absolutely, and it would, so it would much more make sense to, for them to go into a multi-class. And that's actually helpful to me. To you know, to understand, there is a logical reason to go down these multi-classing roads. Uh, the other thing that I would encourage, you know, um, DMs out there and players out there, uh, or actually more DMs, like I am not a good strong build. You know, I don't make good strong player characters. I don't really understand the the build aspects as as well as other people. But actually, I have objectively been able to be a good. DM and I think on the DM side if you are if you understand narrative if you have a strong desire for everybody at your table to have fun and to be able to put the focus on the players rather than on your story you can be successful even if you don't have that that technical knowledge do you remember dual classing yes dual class second edition second edition no, no. Well, only fighters could do, or I mean only oh. humans could dual class and it was you actually had to advance in one class stop advance in another class and then you could be multi-classed wow. as a human right I've seen one excellent example of this in the Mystica uh, trilogy from Forgotten Realms. Uh, I don't act, it was basically this whole kind of quest the door kind of storyline. But the idea is this one, this one, the main character is a human and he's studying to be an apprentice of a wizard. He interrupts the wizard during uh, some kind of summoning and it gets eaten by a monster. And he runs out of there, join, basically joins this ar um, a mercenary company and never looks back. Wow. But later in the story, uh, he's now like a, a cavalry officer, and later in the story, um, he discovers a spell book, and he and he realizes he can read yeah, it because he it. trained yeah. as an apprentice. Yeah, and he actually uses the knowledge in that spell book to get out of a jam. So later on, like he starts progressing, and he's using magic, and he's also a fighter. So like I think there are interesting ways. Oh yeah, to absolutely. multi class. Yeah, and, and and make it very story driven. Um, and again, like I don't care about the optimization. Like if that's what the fun part of the game for you, that's fine. Do that. But if you're just trying to tell a story about your character, like I burned a feet 
because I didn't optimize my character correctly. Uh, it, it, you know, but, but I, because I played him the way I wanted to right. play him. Exactly. Yeah, because you yeah. wanted to be a wizard first. Well, that you, actually... You, you could have gone fighter first, then wizard, and... Got heavy you know, armor. You would have gotten heavy armor to start, and you would have literally lost nothing, you know, by doing it that way, but by doing it the way you did it, you actually used the feet to get heavy armor. Yes. Well, and I think that's interesting, too, is I think I've always been approaching... I've always been fi found multi-classing daunting and also considered it the realm of technical path build plays based players. And so I think I might try, say, hey, but see, that gets even weirder, too. I was about to say, I will think of a, a long-term a long -term story for the... Yeah, so I should look at multi-classing from a story perspective. And like yeah, you said, why would here's you this do event that? Yeah. that made this turn. And that that's a much better way to consider to do a multi-class build and then see what options are on the table from that. That's a neat, that's really an interesting aspect, yeah. So what do you guys think? Multi-class, single-class? Yeah, do you do both... Are you playing AD&D and using dual classing? <laughs> uh, super optimized or super RP, you know, in the middle. Let us know in the comments below why you're doing that. Feel free to click like, share, even subscribe. Hey, check out the cool gear at Nerdarchy the store. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.